It's for real. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is for real. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give First Lady Bolden a hand clap of praise that she come up. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for this day. We thank God that we are able to open up our mouths to give him the praise and the glory. For he has been good all the time. Hallelujah. The name of the message that God gave to me to give to you. It's called, Are You Ready for Restoration? Are you ready for restoration? Or bringing back to a former position or condition? Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt like you've taken too many losses? It could be with family, friends, relationships, careers, job, school, fulfilling a position in the church. You tell yourself every day and you pray to God and ask him to help you gain everything you've lost. I'm here to tell you that God can make up for your losses and give you more than you previously had before. But what are you willing to sacrifice for the Lord? For him to give you what you are asking for. My, my, my. That's something to think about. Because we have to think hard on what it is we have to sacrifice. Right. Have you ever considered or thought about what would you sacrifice for God? Sacrifice meaning to surrender a possession as an offering to God. If you would, turn with me to the book of of Mark. Mark chapter 5 starting in the 25th verse. Mark chapter 5 starting in the 25th verse and Minister Mars will read the 25th verse all the way to the 34th verse. Amen. Amen. Mark, the fifth chapter, verses starting at verse 25, and it reads, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Amen. Amen. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. 
We read that she spent all she had and she still didn't get better. Her situation only got worse. That let us know that money can't buy us healing. But when we heard, but when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Right, in Luke chapter 8, verses 43 through 56, she touched Jesus and immediately got healed. Uh -huh. Jesus charged them that they should not tell no man what was done. Her faith had made her whole. And Jesus told her to go in peace and be whole of thy plea. Mm -hmm. This woman believed and put her trust in the Lord that she would be healed if she touched him. She didn't worry about what people had to say or think. But when Jesus instructed for them not to tell no man what was done, let me know that people won't always believe Jesus healed you. He restored you delivered you, provided for you, or protected you. They had to try him for themselves and come into the house of God and see and hear the great things he can do. Jesus told us to have faith like a mustard seed. But I know the woman with the issue of blood, faith was way bigger than a mustard seed. To bleed for 12 long years, seeing physicians after physicians, and spent all that she had and only got worse but heard of a man named Jesus. And she knew if she touched him, she would be healed. That tells me she didn't have no faith, no faith or a little faith. She had tremendous faith. Tremendous faith in God to heal her. Jesus asked, who touched me? Somebody have touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Are you ready for restoration? Are you ready for God to restore your mind from the negative things you've heard and seen in your life that causes you to lose focus? Are you ready for God to restore your peace? The peace you used to have and it seems like now you're looking for peace and it can't be found. And my husband put me on the song by Juanita by saying, you are my peace. You are my peace and I worship thee. You have to worship God when you don't have any peace because he is all the peace that you need. Restore your house. God is ready to restore your house. Start back anointing your house, the doors, the walls, your children, your spouse, yourself, praying the enemy out. Stop inviting everyone in your home. Don't let unwanted demons in. God is ready to restore your finances. Trust God with your finances. Obey God when he tells you to save or when he says, you don't have it to spend this week or this pay period. Yeah. I know the Lord speaks to me through my husband because I love fast food. <laughs> and I will spend whatever to get my fast food. But when he say, not this week, honey, not this pay period, honey, I have to obey Amen. and not spend. Amen. Restore the calling on your life. God is ready to restore the calling on your life. You are designed to thrive in your calling. Get up and walk in it. Lean not into your own understanding. Get back to praying. Get back to reading his word. Get back to doing his will. Don't worry about the fall. The getting back up is way more important. Are you ready for God to restore your marriage? Start back praying together. Make God the head of your marriage. Pray for one another. Support one another. Are you ready for God to restore your children? Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. 
put them in God's hands. Are you ready for God to restore your relationship with him? You say, Lord, I don't pray like I used to. I don't worship like I used to worship. I don't talk to you like I used to talk to you. I'm here to tell you it's time to get your relationship back with your first love. You have taken your focus off of him worrying about other things. But it is your time now to get that relationship with him. Restore my parents. Some of us have parents that do things that we don't like. Some of them smoke, they drink, they cuss. They talk to us any kind of way. Some of us don't have our parents in our lives, but that's okay. We pray for them and we ask God to restore them and give us that relationship with them. Because what we don't like shouldn't stop them from getting their relationship with God. Well, we are not their God. God is the head of their life. God is ready to restore your family. Pray for your family. Don't judge them because of what they wear, how they look, or what how they dress. God is ready to make a transformation in your family's life. The Lord wants to come and restore your life and restore your life with a new life to you. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. You are not dead. You are alive. Jesus took her by the hand and called, saying, May arise. And her spirit came again. Jesus is holding your hand, calling you by name, telling you to arise. Arise from that situation and that hurt. He has you. God restores Job's fortunes. He can restore you. God restored Naaman's flesh from leprosy. He can restore you. God restored Hezekiah's life. He can restore you. God restored David's soul. He can restore you. Thank God now for your restoration because it is here. Ephesians chapter 4 Verses 23 and 24 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's all right to cry. Let those tears be tears of joy. It is me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. But I ask you again, are you ready for your restoration? attention they caught. It caught your attention because it was a question that required you to dig deep and ask yourself when am I ready? 
Mother Pat, go over there and sit with your niece, if you will, because she's going to cry in a second. But get her phone from her, because what Instagram can't help her with, the man of God will. And, and, and the question is, when do my restoration come? And I know most of us in here may say, well, I have no need for anything to be restored. <coughs> well, I think we all have an area in our life that we need some restoration. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've learned is that restoration doesn't come until there's <coughs> desperation. When you desperate for it. Yeah. The woman with the issue of blood was desperate. Yes. She spent everything. I just believe that she was taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I go there, I believe she was taken advantage of. Meaning that somebody took from her and shot her somewhere. Can I talk to some real folks here? Talk to Come on. They had what she needed, but they weren't willing to give it. And the reason why I say that is because her money was still good. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. You want somebody just tell me to just make it deep for me? Make it deep. But so make it where I can understand. Yeah, we talk for a minute. <laughs> Jesus, here we go. They always had a cure for AIDS. Yeah. Am I right? All right. But if you ain't got the money, you can't get the mm -hmm. cure. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Magic Johnson proved that, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got to live in a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. See, the place where I grew up in was the hood. And I knew a lot of folks over there in Lakeside that when they tore down them projects, I seen a lot of folks from Lakeside and Allendale, and we knew them from coming up. They had AIDS. Mm -hmm. And God blessed the dead. <coughs> but they're no longer here. They died with AIDS mm -hmm. and HIV. Yeah, but they always had a cure for this disease. Mm -hmm. And the whole time that they had a cure for it, if you didn't have the right touch, Meaning if your money wasn't long enough, right. you couldn't get what you need. So watch what they do. They start off with an injection and then they move to a pill. Yeah. Now they got something now that they can just cure you up with just one shot. Mm -hmm. And that's all it takes. But for years, they said that once you get it, you can't be cured. But the woman had this issue 12 years and yet still Jesus cured her. Now, I'm curious to want to know why did she want to be made whole and not just healed? Healing is one thing, but being made whole from what hurting you is another. The woman wanted healing, and then she thought on it, and she said, just to get healed ain't good enough. I need to be made whole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, come on. Uh, you catch what I just said? Mm -hmm. I can walk around all day and be healed yeah. from one thing. Mm -hmm. But how would I know if I'm whole mm -hmm. from that thing mm -hmm. that I walked around and I'm walking away from? Just because I've been away from it for three to five, ten years don't mean that I'm whole. Yeah, come on. When I'm challenged by what it is that I've been healed from, mm -hmm. uh -huh. then I'm made whole. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. When it don't bother me, uh -huh. you know, when 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 when, when the, the words of others don't fit me like a clothes. All right. When it's not tailored, when they words are no longer tailor made for my mind. Uh -huh. Then I can say I'm whole. I've heard a lot of speculators. Uh -huh. But one thing I've learned is that God loves you with evidence while folks hate you with speculations. Uh -huh. But my God today. Uh -huh. So the woman didn't care what she had going on. She just needed 
to be whole. Yeah. Uh huh. See, she had the issue. She knew this. Yeah. Uncle Buddy, the people got her money. She knew that. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, she had friends who probably told her, you know, around about twelve noon, if you if you here, I'll come by and check on you. Mm -hmm. And then she said, all right, thank you. And they know she can't move from room to room because the Bible say that every place that she went, she was steady dripping blood. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then not only was she dripping blood, but she was losing life. Because uh -huh. life is in the blood. Now yeah. watch this. Uh, five ounces of blood runs through our body. Uh -huh. And if you lose at least two pints of blood, you get weak, don't you? Uh -huh. Come on, talk to me, yeah. some of you women who done had children yeah. and lost some blood and then they had to give you some blood. Come on, yeah. talk to me here. Uh -huh. Your blood didn't just replenish itself, did it? Uh -huh. They had to add some pinks or some quartz to your blood. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They had to match it, in other words. So watch this. Uh, as the woman is losing blood, she's losing life. So she could not get around to the next room like she wanted to because the more the years went on, she had to be careful in her steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had to be careful by which she would utilize her body. Right. Uh huh. But watch this. In the 12th year, she started saying to herself, I'm tired and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh-huh. I'm tired of the issue. I'm, I'm just tired of it, you know. I, I'm tired of folks taking my money and telling me that, uh, you know, we doing all we can do, but uh, I think we done come to the final conclusion if she had any kind of insurance. I'm quite sure they pulled on her insurance so much until they told her that her premium has run out. If, if she had any kind of medical assistance, I'm quite sure that she lost some Medicaid right there because they were saying we can't afford to cover you with this type of illness. I'm quite sure the money that she had, whatever it was coming from, if it wasn't replenishing itself and her money was and working for her then she finally runs out of money so when she runs out of money she runs out of help yeah, yeah, I want to talk to yeah, some real folks here yeah. that you ain't got a dime in your pocket yeah. but you ain't looking to nobody else to help you yeah. because your eyes are still fixed on the Lord yeah. no matter what your issue is oh yeah I know we all need some help every yeah. now and again I know we all need a time in our life where we need somebody to be right there and say hey help me because I'm going through, but I'm going to tell you this, that restoration don't come until desperation is at its best. Right. When you are too desperate to be denied, God yeah. say, now I can restore. Right. I don't want to just give you money and you go back to doing the same thing that yeah. you used to do when I gave you the money. No, if I give you anything called finance, I want to add prosperity to your finance. If I'm going to restore your finance, I need to restore the prosperity yeah. of the finance. What is the prosperity is when the finances start working in your house. Yeah. That means we no longer sit up here. We just blow money. We splurge money. We buy because we can. I don't care about the fashion. I don't care about the clothing line. I don't care about Louis Vuitton. I don't care about Michelle or Michael or whoever. I don't care about all that. Just as long as the clothes I got on is comfortable. Yeah. Now, it don't matter how my hair look today. Just thank God that I can afford to get yeah. my hair did. Uh, who talking to today. It yeah. don't matter what I try. Just thank God that it still get me from point A to point B. And I see myself over here in something better. I'm going to get restored even if I got to crawl to Jesus to get there. Y'all going to make me preach in this house. I got to get restored. It does not matter. I watch this. And, 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 and getting restored uh, and getting that restoration that you need, sometimes it's going to come with a fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to come with a real fight. It's going to come with a fight. Because I'm going to tell you something. Before God release it, you better watch out because the devil going to send all kinds of carbon copies. Before that you get what God about to release, the devil going to throw everything at you in your way. Because what Satan wants you to do is doubt the yeah. fact that you believe that that's for you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Watch this. Uh, it feels good to say, Lord, I've been in a broken relationship and I need you to bless me with a better relationship that's not like the relationship that left me broken. Yeah. And watch what Satan does. Satan says, you waiting, but I'm not going to attack you in your way. I'm going to wait till God give you something that you can say, finally, I got. Then I'm going to attack you while you got. Because I want 
want you to doubt what you got and doubt the fact that is this of God or is not who am I talking to? But when you know without a shadow of a doubt and you know that you know that you know, then you can tell the devil, I don't care what you throw out at me. I know what God has given me. No man is going to take it from me. Look at somebody and say, you got to get restored. Tell them you got to get restored. Now watch this. With the word restored, you got to understand that there was something already in there. So when something is in there, re means to do again. Uh oh, catch this, catch this, catch this. Don't want to lose it. When something is already there, God said, I can work with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can work with it because it's something already there. What is there? My praise was already there. My faith was already there. My belief was already there. My help was already there. What you mean? I was already there. In other words, I'm only simply saying is that what the devil is throwing at me, he have not taken everything from me. He only got what he thought he can have that I was willing to give up. But now since I'm here with God, God said, I'm giving you back everything that somebody took from you. That means identity. I'm giving it back. That means character. I'm giving it back. Because some of the times uh, when folks walk out of our life, we let what they walk out of it walk out with us. I want to talk to some real folks here. Uh -huh. You go through brokenness and you're looking for to be whole and to be healed. And when folks leave, then that's when you leave as well. But wait a minute. How do I leave when folks leave? Simple. Because you can be standing in the natural but in the spirit. You are on the other side of town. You can be standing right there in the natural but in the soul realm. You are somewhere else. You can be in your house in your bed. But in your mind, you somewhere else. I want to preach to you here. And Jesus is saying, I want to restore your mind back, restore your spirit back, and give you back your soul. And I want to beat up on your heart and protect your heart. And then the next time something come across you, you can say, I've been down that road before, and I'd be a fool to go back down that road again. Somebody say, I need to get restored. I need to get restored the one with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood struggle. Oh my God. That's deep, man. I promise you, that's real deep. Mm -hmm. She struggled so bad to where money really wasn't the common factor in this. Yeah. It was a matter of life and death. Yeah. Because it was all about how bad do you want it, woman? Yeah, and how much do you want? Yeah. The, see, healing comes as a container. Mm -hmm. Healing does. It comes as a container. Uh -huh. Because he pours it out. Right. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I got a lot of scripture that prove that God pour out his healing yeah. upon his people. Yeah. Uh -huh. But watch this. Holiness come as a universal thing. Uh -huh. See, because I don't want to just have healing and he pour it out. Yeah. Because if he pour out healing upon me, I got to watch out for interceptors. Uh -huh. You know what an interceptor is. That's a person that's coming in your season yeah. of getting healed. Yeah, 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 yeah. An interceptor is this right here. It's when somebody come along on the side of you and you start ministering to them out of your hurt and yet you're not whole yet and you forget that you still got some wounds yeah, and you're yeah, trying to yeah. carry them and they're pulling off of the script you have and now since you are still wounded trying to carry them and they finally d d sit the wheat out of you and sit yeah. the healing, then they say thank you, I'm going by my baby. You left there crippled and you left there still limping and limping and saying hey, don't forget about me and they simply saying bye bye. talk about friends when friends come around you when you just got out of something you know what a friend is you know what a real friend is a, 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 a real friend is the person that'll tell you uh man i see you going through and i see you just come out of something too yeah but uh i'm gonna stick with you and i'm gonna respect your wishes okay. and if you're hurting i'm gonna give you your time to get healed yeah. i'm gonna respect that and let you Recover. I'm going to respect that and let you heal. Because I miss my friend. But I'm going to check on you. This is a real friend. They're not going to go to social media and symbolically post the post about you. They're not going to go to Instagram 
and then say stuff about you in their picture. Come on here, somebody. They're not going to go to TikTok and make a video of your struggle. I wish I could talk to some real folks here. Fake friends, these be frenemies. It's the folks who say, look at you now. Mm -hmm. You thought you was all that, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, now look at you. Uh -huh. Look how they do Look how they do you. Uh -huh. And then when you go and read the post, you say, wow. You're saying what I just told you. Yeah. You're talking about me. Yeah. Uh -huh. But watch this. The God in you will say, just click like. Uh -huh. I want to talk to some folks. I feel like preaching. Uh -huh. The God in you will say, just heart it. Uh -huh. Just to let your friend of me know I ain't watching your page, but I'm in agreement with you because you don't know like I know what God is getting ready to do. Uh -huh. Baby, you looking at the man that left, but you don't see the husband that walked in. I feel like preaching here. Oh, Y'all ain't going to talk Help 
me. And Luke said, well, you know, it's going to come with a cost. I got to charge you because I can't mix my love for you with my practice. I, I'm a licensed physician and I practice this, but I got to do it because this is business and not pleasure. I believe if Luke would have wrote the right stuff, then the woman never would have been in his page of his book. I feel like preaching here. If folks would have said the right stuff when you was growing up, maybe your life would not have went the way that they wrote it out. But I thank God for the articles that was written about me. Because God is the only one that can look beyond your faults and see your need. God is the only one while man too busy looking at your outer appearance. God is right there looking at your heart. And what man judge you on, God say, well done. What man give up on you, God say, come on in. When man close one door, God turns around and open up a double door. Who am I preaching to today? The woman come to Luke and say, Luke, help me. Luke looks at her and say, I got to do this, but I need something. Luke, I'm all out of money. I don't have the money. Help me, Luke. I believe by this time. Can I get somebody to demonstrate? You want to be my demonstrator? Come here. Come here. I'm going to make you low down. Get down. Get down. Can I let you help me demonstrate? Come here. Now you got to get all the way down. Because you blow down. Do my favor. We're going to put that robe on. Here, here, here we go. You got to put that robe on. Why are you tall? If that robe fit him, he know his calling then. He's going to be like, I ain't ready to be a ribbon. <laughs> I'd be a rabbi, but not the ribbon. <laughs> The woman looked down and dragging herself in the presence of Jesus. All right. That's what she did. She drug herself out the house. That's I believe she was looking just like that. Uh-huh. Oh. Let me help you. Yeah, you can. It's just one button. Open you up to your destiny. That's it, just one doorway. There you go. Come on. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. You like Uncle Scrooge. Come on. This is going to be Jesus. And Jesus is walking with his disciples. The woman comes. Come on. You got to crawl behind and grab the hem of that garment at the bottom. Right there. She grabbed it. Now I want you to understand something. The scriptures say she touched the hem of the garment. But in order for him to feel that touch, I believe the scripture should have gave us more depth and told us that she held on to the hem. Keep holding it and keep walking until it stopped him in his tracks. He felt something come out of his body. Now wait a minute. If it come out the body, it should have been that she should have been touching the body. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anybody know anything about a direct contact okay. versus an indirect contact? Yeah. Indirect is when you touch something that's a conductor to something that's already connected to the conductor. Uh -huh. The garment was a type of indirect contact. Because she did not directly make contact with his flesh. Yeah. She touched the hem of the tarsal area where the garment is, the tallow down here. Yeah. And it was just something about the hem line that was trimmed out by God. Uh -huh. God did not put the anointing all on the shoulders. Yeah. Uh -huh. God didn't put the anointing on the back nor on the chest. But God said, if you want to know where the anointing is, it's hiding in a secret place. Yeah. And the only way to reveal where the secret is at, you're going to have to get low down. Watch oh, this. Yeah. In other words, God going to have to humiliate you in order to honor you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't catch that. You're going to have to go through stages of humiliation uh -huh. before you go through honoring. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's very humiliating for a woman to be bleeding and hollering out unclean, but you about to touch somebody who is clean. It's very humiliating for this woman to be coming around here and
and watch this. All of a sudden, you touch and hold on, and he hollers out, somebody touch me. Now watch this. He go get phone boys. Man, ain't nobody touch you. You tripping. Man, you see all these people? You bugging. You hit some of that stuff before you came up in the church today, Jesus. Wow. Watch this. That's how they did them. Because we, we, we walking, man, and you tripping. Don't, don't, don't think they didn't have everything in their time. They just didn't have wheels like a car. Yeah. But they had everything, everything. Nothing new was done under the sun. Come on here. Yeah. And, and watch They questioning him. Look at all these people. Mm-hmm. Let's, do, let's dissect it. All these people. Oh, yeah. Which symbolically speaks of different types of people. Yeah. You got good folks, black folks, white folks, red folks, blue folks, purple folks, no matter who. But you got all these people. I'm talking about the good, the bad, the ugly, too, and the worst. You got all these people. I'm talking about the rich, the poor, the wealthy, the middle class. Come on here. The low class, the no class. Come on here. You got all, all these people. And you saying somebody touched you. Well, Jesus, if you just that anointed, then you should know who touched you. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Here it is. You say, since you want to play on my top, mm-hmm. let's go there. Yeah. He turns around and looked down at him. And there she go. Look up. She already cock-eyed and scared. Uh-huh. Look up. You can let it go. He told her. He looks at her. And she fearing and trembling. You got to look up at her. And she tells him all the truth. Everything that happened. She told him. Uh-huh. It was me. Uh-huh. I believe her first uttering words was, Rabbi, have mercy on me. Because uh-huh. according to their custom, yeah. the Jewish custom, uh-huh. you cannot come in the presence of nobody. Yeah. Not, not, not alone, you cannot come in the presence of a high priest. Yeah. And Jesus was a high priest. Yeah. And if you come and interrupt them, you can be stoned to death. Uh-huh. If you bring your nasty, dirty self and touch a holy man of God, uh-huh. you can be stoned to death yeah. or thrown outside of the city All and right. excommunicated. All That's right. their custom. Yeah. She defied the custom and he said, somebody touch me. She's scared. That's why she was scared. And she looked up and told him all the truth. Mm-hmm. And I believe her first uttering words was, Lord, have mercy on me. Yeah. I did it. And he looked in there. I think he saw the trailway of blood. Mm-hmm. And I think for everything he saw behind him, he started counseling that life. Yeah, it does. He started crucifying that life. Yeah. He started killing off that life. Thank you. Follow me. And as he killed off all the life until he got to where the last drop could have been. Yeah. When he got to where the last drop should have been. Yeah. The Bible say that after the touch, her fountain of life dried up. Oh, y'all ain't caught that head. In other words, that stuff that she thought that was behind her, that was giving her life, was really killing her and giving her death. But Jesus canceled all of those lives. In other words, he cut off the lifeline of everybody else and everything else. And he made himself her only provider. He made himself her only source. Now, let me help you understand something. You mean to tell me that it's just something miraculous about Jesus? I'm here to tell you, no. It's the God that was in Jesus that was reconciling that woman and bringing her back to her state of restoration. I'm here to tell you that it ain't nothing miraculous about me if I lay hands on you. Come on here, somebody. It's the God in me that does his healing through me as I let him use me as a vessel. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It's about the God that's in you because if God is not in you, you cannot do what God say do. Woman, get up. Rise up. Go her way. But some of y'all may say, you, you good. What about her money? He said, I just want to see that right there a little while longer. Mm-hmm. What about her money? All right. Don't worry about the money. Yeah. She whole. Yeah. She can get the money back. Uh-huh. What about her jaw? Don't worry about it. He got the jaw still waiting on him. All right. And if the jaw don't want her back, yeah. I'm quite sure she can go on and start a business. Yeah. Cause in that day and time, you can open up a marketplace anywhere. Mm. You, all you had to do was just get you some grapes, yeah. sell you some pomegranates, huh. sell you some plums or some peaches. All right. 
But whatever you had to do, they did what they had to do. Watch this. I'm closing right here. The woman caught restoration yeah. because she had desperation. Looking at you right now. Uh -huh. Take a look at your life. Yeah. What areas is kind of gray? Mm. What areas in your life is very shallow? All right. But you're claiming them to be deep. But you're walking on shallow water. Mm. But you're saying, hey, I can handle this. God said, no, you can't. Mm. Got a question to ask everybody in here. Mm. If we was to make a pitch black door and tell you to close your eyes uh -huh. and reflect back on when you was a kid and ask yourself a question, did you ever think that your life would go the way that it did? Mm. And then when you open your eye, turn the light on. Would you see yourself and tell the truth and say, no, I didn't? Or would you say to yourself, it's all right, I ain't worried about it. That's just life. Well, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to accept everything that life throws at you. Yeah. You can change yeah. in the midst of pain. Wow. Oh, 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 boy. That's my life. Oh, my, my. <laughs> my wife says something, and I'm going to close here. because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She said something. I wrote it down. She said, obey God. When he says you don't have it this week. Uh -huh. I wrote that down. And then I caught something else. She talked about the woman having tremendous faith. Mm -hmm. And it was something that she said. That Jesus said who touched me. Mm -hmm. And as she said that. I heard it come back in my mind. And it said to me. It's the who and the touch. Uh -huh. I'm gonna let y'all process that one. I ain't trying to be, I ain't trying to be no uh, scholar here. I'm just trying to be simple. It's the who in the touch. Yeah. Not so much about it is who touched me because you know you did. Mm -hmm. But it's the who in the touch. Mm -hmm. What is the who? Let's dissect that and let's close. What is the who? First of all, the W is the willingness. The willingness to do it. What is the who? The H is the high L. The willingness, high L. And the O is to obstruct justice. You got to be willing to kick against the odds, defy the law of what man say, and go after the law of God. If God say it's yours, who can stop it? Mm -hmm. And if God be for you, yeah. <coughs> who can be against you? Yeah. Right. And if you got enemies, God is more than the world that's against you. Yeah. It's in the who mm -hmm. that you're going to find that restoration. Yeah. Who is determined? Mm -hmm. Who is desperate? Mm -hmm. Who needs it? Yeah. Who wants it? Because it's always been available. I thank God for you. Thank you Come on, give God a hand. God bless you.